We're continuing our Lent series on uh, creation and being good stewards of what God's given us. And uh, Anna's coming to speak to us this morning and uh, is bringing the passage to us and unpacking it. But before we start, thanks everybody for sending in your photos, a lovely shot of Lyon. But before we start, there's a call to worship, a bit of worship banter. And I'm going to start with the, the bits in white. And if you want to join in the text in yellow, let's pray. Lord, thanks for gathering us together this morning. And as we've heard already, there are things to celebrate, to give thanks to you for. Lord, we come to worship you and celebrate you in the fullness of your goodness Lord, there are things to come to say to you there are people in situations we hold joyfully and also heavily on our hearts thank you lord that we might come to you and so a call to worship in the beginning before time before people before the world began God, God was here and now among us, beside us, enlisting the people of earth for the purposes of heaven. God, God is. is. In the future, when we've turned to dust and all we know has been, has found its fulfillment. God, God will, will be. be. Not denying the world, but delighting in it. Not understanding the world, but redeeming in it through Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit. God, God was, God, God is, God, God will be. be. Amen. Amen. So let's sing our first song, which is All Creatures of Our God and King. All Creatures of Our God and King. <laughs> of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing, Alleluia, Alleluia, the burning sun with golden beam, the silver moon with softer gleam. the 
greatest blessings on our way. Oh, praise Him. Amen. So Lord, we do, we come to praise you with all that there is in us. And um, this morning, as we were saying just a minute ago, as we come to our service this morning, there are good things to hear, there are things to celebrate, there are things to rejoice in, but there's also the opportunity of a fresh start. And this morning we come uh, mindful of the ways that we've let ourselves down we've let others down around us we've let the lord down and uh, we've come with the opportunity to receive god's forgiveness and a fresh start and a new beginning and one of the joys i think of being able to do these online services is you get to hear these words and receive these words in your home I don't know when the last time it was that you received the forgiveness of God sat at your kitchen table or you received a fresh start from God sat in your study or you heard the words of God's love and affection for you sat in your lounge. I don't know where you are right now, but what I love about the way that we're able to worship like this is you can engage with the Lord right where you are right now. And there's a fresh start waiting for each of us this morning. So read through these words, scan through them and see if they're relevant or pertinent to you. And the beauty of being on our own is you can do these things privately. They can register with you just as you are this morning. So if you're ready and you would like to follow me 
in this prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. Lord, we are truly sorry and turn away from our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in the newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. So take a moment, just as you are. work with that image a little bit, turning your back on what was past and looking full face towards the Lord and what is new. And here, receive these words for yourself right where you are right now. This prayer that is promised that the God of love and power Forgive us, free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his spirit and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So where you are right now, receive that forgiveness for yourself that healing, that strengthening, that raising to new life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we're going to change the tempo a little bit now. We're going to sing our next song. And um, <clears throat> it's a, a declaration that we're here for you and that we want to welcome the Lord and that the way that we're doing that is by praising him and worshipping him. So slightly different tempo. Let our hearts, let our praise be your welcome. Let our praise be your welcome. Let our song we are here for you we are here for you let your breath come from heaven fill our hearts with the life we are here for you we are here
Lord, we do, we welcome you in this place and the joy of this, that phrase means that we welcome you exactly where each and one of us are. We welcome you here alongside us in our homes, in our studies, in our sheds, wherever we are, we welcome you here amongst us this morning. And we're uh, going to turn to the farmyard. It's great to have Peter here with us this morning. And uh, Peter, what's been going on down in the farm this week? Okay. Hi. Good morning, everybody. In the farm, the farmer met the sheep and said this. The farmer said this to the sheep. John chapter 2, 14, 6, 4, John chapter 2, verse 14 to 16 says this. In the temple courts, he found the people selling cattle, sheep and doves and others sitting at the table exchanging money. So he made a whip out of course and drove off from the temple courts, both sheep and cattle. He scattered the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. To those who sold doves, he said, get out of, the, get out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a market. And the sheep thought, hmm, what does that mean, farmer? Well, the farmer said, well, the, our farm is like that. I take care of you, all the animals. So everything here I take care of. So don't be mean to all the things around you. And I take care of you, like the food, the water, and everything. So don't worry, I take care of you. And then she said, okay. And then he was walking and he saw his friend. He saw the bear. And the bear said, oh, hello, sheep, how are you? And then she said, I'm fine, how are you? And the bear said, oh, I got something special for you, sheep. Let me tell you my my idea. I have this amazing idea I want to share with you. Do you have a problem, sheep? Well, let me tell you, you do have a problem. The problem is this. It's hard to go to the watering trial. I know it's five feet. I know it's 10 feet. I know it's, it's 40 feet away, but the watering trial is far. It's super far. I know it's hard to walk there. You could own your own water. Here, for a half a biscuit, I'm selling you a water bottle. Do you wanna buy a water bottle? It's amazing. I know some of the animals, they don't have hands, they don't have arms, but it's okay. You could stand next to the water bottle and you look so cool. Look, water. But I like to make a disclaimer. Bear does not open water bottles for anybody. You could buy it and it's cool, but I can't open it. It's your luck. And the sheep like looked at him and said, oh, that's not right. Water is free. We drink from the watering trough, everybody. We don't need no, no water bottle. And the bear said, no, no, I've been selling all those, all, all of it so far. I sold four water bottles. I got four biscuits, half a biscuit. And the sheep got mad. No, that's not nice because water should be free. Where'd you get the water? And the bear said, mm. well, I went to the water faucet and filled the water, the plastic bottle with water and I've been selling it. Wait a minute, you've been selling the same water we've been drinking? Yeah, but it's in a bottle. She said, no, that's not good. We need the watering trough. That's where all the animals go and that's where we drink. And you know what? That's what we have to do. Can you go return the biscuit and get all the water bottle you've been selling? And the bear said, mm, okay. So he went to all the animals and said, I'm sorry for selling you the water bottle. And I know it's not good. There's free water there. And I've been asking for biscuit. Here's your biscuit back. And then he came back to the sheep and said, look, I returned everything you asked. Okay, good job. 
I know you love biscuit. So here, have some biscuit with me. And the bear shared. And she made it. And they were very happy. Okay, bye. Bye, Peter. Bless you. Thank you. For a moment, I was slightly concerned that there wasn't going to be biscuit there. <laughs> I, I thought, hey, Peter's going to go for a week without biscuits here. But we didn't. We're there. And it was a reward. Thank you, Peter, for Puppet Corner and um, that take on justice and putting things right. And we're going to hear more about that right now. Our gospel reading, uh, as you quite rightly picked up, Peter, is from John chapter 2 verses 13 to 22 for those of you following at home just checking is marie bolton there i've got marie down to read but i'm just checking you're not there marie i'm reading all right hey thanks armor great i'll put the words up on the screen and um we'll pick up our reading from here so john chapter 2 verses 13 through to verse 22 thanks armor When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple courts, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and others sitting at tables exchanging money. So he made the whip out of cords and drove all from the temple courts, both sheep and cattle. He scattered the coins of the money changes and overturned the tables. To those who sold doves, he said, get these out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a market. His disciples remembered that it is written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then responded to him, what sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and I will rise it again in three days. They replied, it has taken 46 years to build this temple and you are going to rise it in three days. But the temple he had spoken of was his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he had said. Then they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you. you. Thanks, Armand. Thank you. So we've got this image. I mean, it's a shocking story, isn't it? And it's uh, an image of... The Lord Jesus in furious rage and uh, we're going to be looking at that theme of you know what is it we can be rightly angry about so Anna thanks so much for sharing with us this morning I'm just going to try and get your there you are, screen up brilliant take it away before, just before you start, I'll just, sorry, pray for you. Joe reminded me. <laughs> well, thank you for these words, long written down. Pray for Anna as your messenger this morning that you, we might hear your words fresh and new for us today. Amen. 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 It's often said that anger, when understood correctly, is a strong emotional reaction to something that's really important to us. Can you think of the last time you were so moved by an injustice that you got really angry like sheep did in the puppet story? What did you think? How did it feel? What did you do, if anything? And have you ever stopped in a moment of anger and asked yourself, what would Jesus do in this situation? In today's passage from John, we get some answers about how Jesus reacted to injustice, what was important to him and how he dealt with anger. In John, Jesus tells the sellers of animals and the money changers to stop making his father's house a marketplace. Jesus was rightly angry that the temple's purpose had been moved away from worship and towards business. And closer examination of the context of this marketplace reveals that Jesus's anger was heightened because of the specific type of injustices carried out. This marketplace was in the outer temple area 
in the court of the Gentiles. The court of the Gentiles, as the name suggests, was the only area that non-Jewish people could access, the closest they could get to the real presence of God in the Holy of Holies, or so they believed at the time. These markets sold souvenirs, sacrificial animals, and food. There were also currency changing services where people could exchange Roman currency for the Tyrian coins that were required to pay the annual temple taxes, often at highly inflated prices. This currency and these animals were marketed as having the uh, marketed as being the must have offerings for worship. The sellers were profiting from people's desire to worship God as best they could. This trade was costliest for those with less money to spare and created barriers for the poor, maybe even forcing a choice between feeding their households and atoning for their sins. And Jesus comes into this place and utters a command. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. He was understandably furious that God's home was being turned into an overly costly and unjust barrier to worship. In the passage, Jesus uses the Greek word oikos, which is house in English. The Greek word forms the root of oikonomos, which means to manage one's household, from which our word economy is derived. In modern terms, economy means the management of a country's wealth and resources. But it's worth reflecting on this broader meaning of economy, of caring for the household and all its people, resources and wealth. The word economy is also related to other words we know, ecumenism, for example, which is relationships between different types of Christians, the care of the household of faith. Also ecology, the care of the household of the earth or the environment. Jesus is commanding these people to use a different type of economy. Jesus is declaring a new way to manage God's house. In our economies, we buy and sell, we make and lose money. But in God's house, everything is free. God's forgiveness is freely given. And Jesus's promises are for everyone, regardless of their ability to pay. There is no profit, no human power, no death, only God's priceless, infinite love. But how do we get from costly temporal sacrifice to this free worship? Today's passage gives us some clues. It's only in John's account of this incident that we hear, hear Jesus say that he will rebuild, rebuild the temple in three days. And he's referring to his resurrection. The disciples realize this in, uh, later on. Jesus's resurrection was going to make forgiveness free for everyone. No more buying animals for sacrifice. No more transaction fees for temple taxes. Jesus' sacrifice was made once and for all mankind. And so ended the requirement of temple sacrifice for the atonement of sins. Free forgiveness for all, for eternity. His act of righteous anger is prophetic. It is an upsetting of the order of temple worship and sacrifice that foreshadows a complete overhaul of the old systems, including the predatory profiteering of animal sellers and money changers. The coins of the money changers are cast to the ground so the people could be lifted up to God. And we're going to take a moment now to listen to a song inspired by this passage. Um, sing if you know it, if you don't, just listen. It's called Inspired by Love and Anger.
superb. Thank you, Anna. Thank you for those images of the coins falling to the floor that people might be raised up and lifted up. And thank you uh, for the image of the upsetting of the sacrifice in order for there not to be any more transaction. We're going to listen to our second reading. Abina's going to bring us our second reading, which comes from 1 Corinthians, and uh, it's chapter 1, verses 18 through to 25. I'll put it up on the screen there so Bina, you can see that. Yes. You got that? So Christ crucified is God's power and wisdom. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I would destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent, I will frustrate. Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Bina. Go on, Anna, take some. So, when the disciples remember that it was said, zeal for your house will consume me, they're remembering part of Psalm 69. There are further clues in the end of this psalm about what things will look like after the overhaul of temple worship through Jesus' seal. What it will look like to embrace the wisdom of the cross instead of the wisdom of the world. In the psalm, it says, I will praise God's name in song and glorify him with thanksgiving. This will please the Lord more than an ox, more than a bull with its horns and hooves. The poor will see and be glad. And you who seek God, may your hearts live. The Lord hears the needy and does not despise his captive people. Let heaven and earth praise him, the seas and all that move in them. So what might these passages be saying to us in our current sermon series on ecology? I'd like to suggest one way of reading this passage ecologically. Economic and ecological values are often seen as in conflict. That's the wisdom of the world. But God's, God's vision for his house, his wisdom as outlined in Genesis 1, is unified. As stewards of his creation, we have equal responsibility to both the human and the natural world. Likewise, Jesus' righteous anger at the misuse of God's house also extends beyond the temple walls outwards to the management and care of all the earth, to a new vision of glory and worship. Let heaven and earth praise him, the seas and all that move in them. Perhaps what Jesus was doing in the temple was removing barriers to worship for these animals, these creatures who could have fullness of earthly life and worship through Jesus acting as the final sacrificial lamb in their place. These animals were freed from having to die as sacrifices for our sin. We also know as Christians that part of forgiveness means repenting and turning away from our sins. It means making amends for the way our sins have affected others. Maybe one way we can proclaim Christ's forgiveness is by making amends for the cruelties that humans have inflicted on animals, on creation, so that they can live and worship as God intended. Now you're probably asking animals worshiping, that seems like foolishness. That seems like to the world, some kind of madness. And, it's a, and what's getting in the way of animals worshiping? This may seem like a really strange question to ask, 
But I'd argue that the Bible is full of examples of creation as a whole, not just humans, declaring the glory of God by its very existence. In Psalm 19, we hear that the heavens declare the glory of God, the skies proclaim the work of his hands. In Psalm 65, 13, the pastures are clothed with the flocks and the valleys are decked with grain. They shout in triumph, indeed they sing. And in 1 Chronicles 16, 32, let the sea resound and all that is in it, let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. So the Bible tells us that the natural world, just by existing, declares God's glory. Who are we then to stop creation's worship? Who are we to desecrate natural resources or to exploit animals? As Christians, we believe in Jesus's ultimate salvation of all creation at the end of time. So do we wait until there's a new heaven and a new earth to care for God's creation? Some might have said that Jesus, knowing the old system of temple worship would soon be made redundant through his death, shouldn't have staged such an act as we read about in John. That goes against worldly wisdom. What's the point? That he should have waited until his resurrection had restored free access to God's love through forgiveness of sins. But he didn't. And I'd suggest that following Christ means, nor should we. It's true that being a Christian means asking for God's kingdom to come in the future. It also means enacting God's kingdom now, a kingdom where the first are last and the last are first, a kingdom where Jesus' teachings are the guide for our lives, including his example of righteous anger. Therefore, any action we can take to speak up for the weak and the poor, those likely most affected by climate change, is a prophetic enactment of God's free love and proclaims our belief in his perfect restoration of a creation that will live in harmony, rich and poor, human and non-human. And how do we act on our own, injust our own anger at injustice following Jesus' example? I'd like to offer two ideas drawn from today's reading. Firstly, prayerful preparation. In John 15, in this chapter that we read, we see that Jesus makes a whip of cords to drive out the many changes in the animal sellers. I quite like this detail, as it seems as though Jesus took time to create a tool that would increase the effect of his actions. In another account of Jesus cleansing the temple, which may or may not be later, in Mark 11, the passage supports this idea that Jesus took time, as we read of Jesus visiting the temple the day before he takes action. So Jesus likely prayed and thought deeply before acting on his anger. This reminds us that we too should plan, pray, and carefully prepare our own tools so that we can be led by God in our righteous anger. And bringing our heartfelt lament to God about what's wrong in the world can be really good practice for speaking out against injustice elsewhere. Secondly, timing and authority. Jesus timed his action to maximum effect right before Passover. This was a time when Jewish people flocked to Jerusalem to prepare for and celebrate the high holiday and when trade was at its peak. This was a place that was at the religious and political heart of the land. And we also know that Jesus had authority in the temple. It was his father's house. This tells us something else about how we can be righteously angry by using our own positions of influence at the right place and in the right time. Most of us have places that are really important to us Places where we get angry about things because we care about them. In our church, our community, our workplace, our home. God has placed us in positions of authority, perhaps in smaller ways, in our own lives. Our anger and our prayer can lead us to reflect on what is important to us and where we have some authority. Places where we can use our righteous anger to stand up against injustice, remove barriers to worship and amplify the glory of God's creation. So, some questions to think about. What might it mean to turn things upside down for the sake of the gospel and re-examine how our faith relates to God's creation? Might our anger and justice lead us to take action, to declare God's kingdom on earth, and how? Perhaps we can use this time of Lent to bring our anger to God and ask how he can use it to his glory. Let's pray and prepare. Let's use this approach to Easter to proclaim the resurrection truth that God's love is free for all and his message of protection, not profit for all of creation. So that 
Like Christ in the temple, we can begin to tell the world upside down in a prophetic declaration of God's kingdom, a kingdom where all of heaven and earth can praise God freely in all of his glory. Amen. 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 Thank you, Anna. We're going to let some of those questions marinate a little bit. We're going to sing and we're going to respond uh, with a song. Um, and it picks up that image of everything that has breath, praising the Lord. So as we sing this, don't worry if you don't know it or even if you don't want to sing it. But as we hear this music, maybe we can ask, we can be asking some of those questions. You know, Anna said, what is it that we can do to turn the world upside down for the gospel and uh, bring our anger to the Lord and, and offer that to him, that it might be refined, redeemed, that might be used for his purposes with his uh, with his training and authority uh, and timing and authority uh, best served. So let's start our attitude of prayer because we're going to continue in prayer in just a moment as we bring this to the Lord in our next song. Amen. And so we do, we continue uh, this sort of act of worship, this time of prayer, and uh, we're going to continue in our prayers. And 
I've got some prayers here and they're kind of a bit of prayer banter, really. And I'll say the bits in white and then follow in, join in, pile in with the, the, the verses in yellow. And the idea is, uh, it's a poem I found uh, earlier, and it's about bringing things to the Lord and in a sense, bringing the material stuff that we've got, the things that we have uh, influence over and bringing them to the Lord and saying, Lord, may they bless you, God. And so when Jesus, uh, we'll hear it in a little while, uh, when Jesus approaches uh, Jerusalem, he says, if, you, if people don't sing out, even these stones would sing out praises. And there's a sense of bringing the whole of creation into the praise of God. And it's particularly those things that we have control over, that they might be served for his purposes, that they might serve for his glory, that they might serve for his justice or his healing or his provision. So let's pray. As I say, join me in the yellow text. So we think this morning, when we come before you, Lord, the things that are precious to us, Thank you that you hear our prayer. It's Mothering Sunday in the UK. And we come before you to give thanks to you, Lord, for all that gives life. O oh Lord, let our city bless God. To, to you, you be glory, glory and praise forever. O oh, let our city bless God. To, to you be glory and praise forever. O bricks and mortar, bless God. O concrete and glass, bless God. O underground pipes and wires, bless God. O tarmac and paving stones, bless God. To you be glory and praise forever. O dandelions and daisies, bless God. O cherry trees and geraniums, bless God. O pigeons and seagulls, bless God. O cats and dogs, bless God. To you be glory and praise forever. O homes and gardens, bless God. O shops and offices, bless God. Hospitals and police stations, bless God. Factories and depots, bless God. To you be glory and praise forever. Bikes and buses, bless, bless God. God. Cars and vans, bless, bless God. God. Lorries and trams, bless, bless God. God. Shopping trolleys and pushchairs, bless, bless God. God. To, to you, you be, be glory and praise forever. forever. Work of our hands, bless, bless God. God. To you, you be glory and praise forever. forever. Work of our minds, bless, bless God. God. To, to you, you be, be glory, glory and praise forever. forever. Families and loners. Bless God. God. Babies to oldies. Bless God. God. Street cleaners and traffic wardens. Bless God. God. Property developers and planners. Bless, Bless God. God. To, to you be glory and praise forever. forever. And now silently name some people on your heart this morning. These people we treasure, we, these people who are precious, bless, bless God. God. To, to you, you be glory, glory and praise forever. May you be blessed, O oh God, in your city. To you be glory and praise forever. May you be blessed, O God, in your city. To you be glory and praise forever. So as Jesus taught us in the words that come most spontaneously or naturally to you, as Jesus taught us to pray, trusting in his promise, trusting in his uh, yeah, hearing and delivery. Let's pray. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven holy be is your name. name. 
your kingdom, kingdom come, come your, your will be done, done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us today our daily bread. Forgive, forgive us our sins as we forgive those, those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, temptation but, but deliver us from evil. For the, the kingdom, the power, power and the glory are yours, now, now and forever. forever. Amen. 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 Do you see it? So uh, we've got some pretty good banter going on today. Uh, so we've got the creed uh, that we've been trying to use. And just a reminder, if you can think of any music that comes from your region, your tribe, your nation, your area, your background, that you might be able to put alongside this creed, we can put the music to it and we can try and uh, say it because it's rhythmic and it's poetic. But we're going to declare our faith together this morning. We're going to declare our faith in the God who was and is and is to come, the one who will bring order, the one who calls us to bring order. So let's declare our faith together. We, we believe, believe in God, God the Father, Father God, God Almighty, Almighty by whose plan earth and heaven sprang to being, the one through whom things began. We believe in Christ the Saviour, Son of God in human frame, Virgin born, the child of Mary, the one on whom the Spirit came. Christ, who on the cross forsaken, like a lamb to slaughter led, suffered under Pontius Pilate, he descended to the dead. We believe in Jesus risen, heaven's King to rule and reign, to the Father's side ascended, till as judge he comes again. We believe in God the Spirit, in, in one church below, below above, saints of God in one communion, one in holiness and love. So by faith our sins forgiven, Christ our Saviour, Lord and friend, we shall rise with him in glory to the life that knows no end. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing two songs as a sort of uh, end of the show show and um the first one is praise the name praise the uh, praise the name of the lord and uh, the second one is well i'm not going to tell you because you love it but um if those of you who like to give during our worship service there's a link i'll put it up in the chat and it'll take you through to the uh, website and if those of you who like to give as part of your worship then there's the link that you can do that on the website but let's sing we're going to praise the name of the Lord. I cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. His body bowed and drenched in tears, they laid him down in Joseph's tomb, the entrance in. Stay. 
sun shall pierce the night and I will rise among the saints my gaze transfixed on Jesus face Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. Oh 
we do, Lord, we worship you, we praise you, we honour you, and we pray that we might, as we step out into this week, be a blessing to you, to those around us, and to ourselves. In your name. Amen. Amen. So, uh, just a final couple of things just to say. Uh, I'll put up all the notices on the YouTube clip. Uh, so if you want to find out, as I say, there's loads of information. I'll put up all on the YouTube clip. Just look at uh, Trinity Church Lyon in YouTube and you'll see this week's notices going up. And then the clever thing is if you want to press pause on the information that you want to know, then you've got all the time in the world to take down the uh, information. Simon's song will accompany it so um, you can learn that too. Another thing is, as you've noticed, all the chords and stuff for the songs are in the in the slides so again if you want to learn those songs go on to youtube and you can learn those songs so the hope is that when we get back to worshiping together uh in for real we'll have a whole new vocabulary of songs that we can sing uh together because that's what we've been doing we've been training during confinement we've been training for when we can be released so i've got a prayer of blessing to share with each other and that's a prayer that calls on God to fuel us and send us. But it's also a, a prayer for our nourishment too. May God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the source of all goodness and growth, pour upon his blessing, all upon, sorry, pour his blessing upon all things created and upon each and one of us, his children, that we may use his gifts to his glory and the welfare of all peoples. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us always. Amen. 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 And so our final words in our worship service together this morning, thanks to Alison who's helped us refrain this a little bit or re yeah reframe it a little bit praise god from whom all blessings flow praise him all creatures here below praise him for all that he has done praise father son and spirit one amen amen big thanks to anna uh, and armor and abina uh, for everyone who's helped contribute to the service this morning the the chat uh, in the chat there you'll see the code for the prayer room if you'd like to pray with someone at the end of the service either about anything that's come up in the service or something specific or particular uh, then uh, there's the chat go through the chat and you'll see the password there as i said last week don't worry if uh, you're in a queue the team will pray with you and they will be there until everyone has been prayed for so don't give up don't you know turn off or think that they're not going to come to you they will pray for everyone who's uh, in the queue so just be patient and they'll get to you as soon as they can thanks to everybody for their contributions and uh, again happy mother's day to all those in the uk and uh, every blessing to you where you find yourselves and into this week amen amen amen